quickly the hot and crowded fintech space. So this is a space that in no uncertain terms is booming. Um, in the last 12 months, we've seen almost $14 billion of funding into the space. Um, when we look at the quarterly trend, you kind of see this is a very steady uptick in both funding and uh, deal activity. Uh, Q2 of 2010 saw a billion uh, of funding, and now we're seeing nearly $3 billion in Q1 2015. So a very steady, healthy climb um, in, uh, in investment uh, into emerging fintech companies. So these are all private company investments. Um, one of the other things uh, that we'll highlight is kind of the players in the space. So before doing that, I wanted to introduce this concept because you're going to see these visualizations throughout the presentation. Um, this is a tool that we use and that we've built called the Business Social Graph. So the idea behind this network map is we let you visualize the investment, acquisition, competitor, and partner customer relationships between various players in a space. And the idea is, can we, you know, how do we help you understand an ecosystem in a dead simple way? So again, using this visualization to help you understand where there's activity and where there is not activity in a space and who might be doing what. So just a level set and make sure folks understand these visualizations that you're going to see throughout. So. Um, just taking that business social graph in in one case, we're gonna we're looking at here is just the level of interest within fintech. So in 2010, there were 223 unique investors within the fintech space, and these are VCs only, not angels or accelerators or any of the other types of investors that we track. In 2015, year to date, if you just look at that business social graph, it is a incredibly more hectic and crazy looking. Um, and there are now 894 active investors. And so investors see opportunity. They see blood in this space. It's a massive industry, obviously. Um, and so they're obviously taking note of it and, and increasing their level of activity. And more of them are entering the space. Um, exit activity is also climbing. So there's been some recent IPOs. It's still modest in terms of growth relative to financings. Um, financings tend to be a early indicator of uh, of of uh, the exit or uh, exit activity. Um, we saw some recent IPOs from Lending Club and OnDeck, and then we see uh, also Yodli, which recently exited as well. So. Financing and exit health is quite healthy at this point. Um, but again, fintech is more of a thematic category. So what are the areas within fintech? If we unbundle fintech a little bit, what areas are hot? What are some of the companies to watch? So let's take a look at that. Um, we're going to use a, a kind of an algorithm we've built called Market Mosaic. So this is trying to understand the attractiveness of an industry looking at data. So we're looking at um, things like sentiment and chatter in a space. So what's the press sentiment within fintech? What's just the volume of activity? What's happening in social media chatter and what's sentiment looking like? We look at factors like hiring activity. So how many open jobs are there in fintech? What's the growth of that hiring relative to other industries? So this is all on an absolute and on a relative basis. Basis. Are there key senior hires coming into the space? Um, we also, of course, look at financing activity and strength. So not just the deals in dollars and the growth in those metrics, but the quality of the investors. And we'll talk, talk about this a bit more, but investor quality, I think, is an important thing for those of you who are at financial services firms to pay attention to. So there's certain investors who are smart money. And so that's when we talk about a quality of investors, that's what we're referring to. And then the final factor is exit activity and strength. So what are the size of the exits? What's the volume? What's the pace of exits? And then again, what's the quality of the acquirers? Are these startups acquiring other startups, which is which in our model is sort of a less of a quality signal? Or are these big, well-heeled companies making the acquisition? So when we combine all those factors together, you come up with kind of this score. And so FinTech, um, you see this mosaic score, the market mosaic score of 840. And... Um, this is kind of, you know, again, from our product, but what you see is kind of its score, and below that you see some of the trending companies and top financings in the area. I think what is useful to look at is how fintech compares to other very sort of en vogue spaces like home automation or cybersecurity, and that's what you see in that orange box. So even relative to other hot areas like home automation or cybersecurity, fintech, when you look at those factors like job growth and sentiment and investor and acquirer growth and quality, we see that fintech is actually a hotter market than some of those other spaces. Um, 
you know, we talked a little bit, or I mentioned earlier, kind of how do we figure out, well, what's the right, what are the areas within fintech that are worth kind of following? And so I think one of the ways that uh, we see uh, folks doing this is they're tracking kind of the proverbial smart money, right? So looking at VC investment overall is interesting. It indicates that, hey, there's more activity happening, but there are a set of investors, kind of your top decile funds, um, that really are good at seeing around corners. You know, these are the folks that have shown a history of betting on the right spaces and on the right company. So when we track those investors, and so we're talking about folks like Sequoia Capital or Union Square Ventures or Excel or Benchmark or NEA or Greylock, you know, what are they investing in? So this is the social graph of their top, of those top 12 investors in their fintech bets. 